Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently, we did a video talking about the best video editing apps on Android. Now, video editing apps on Android have come along incredibly fast, and you can now get some really good results right from the devices that you typically might carry with you, your phone or your tablet. After testing a huge range of apps, my recommendations were Cyberlink Power Director and Kindmaster. In this video, we're gonna dive deeper into Cyberlink Power Director on Android. And we're gonna run through exactly how to edit your videos and get great results using the app. Now this video isn't a full review and it's also not gonna run through every feature and every tool that's available in the app. We're gonna be running through a full editing process end to end, covering everything you need to know to get editing fast with great results using your Android device. We'll have a similar video coming up soon for Kindmaster on Android and I'll put a link in the cards. Okay, before we jump in, we're gonna be following through the primal video method, which is the most efficient editing process to eliminate any rework or wasted time while you're editing your videos. We did a video on this a while back, but if you haven't seen it, you can download the PDF here to help you with your videos. Okay, so in PowerDirector, the first thing to do is to click the big button in the middle, create a new project then give your project a name. So straight out, it takes you to the import video screen. So we'll just hit the back button to get back out of that. So this is the overall interface for Cyberlink Power Director. We've obviously got our timeline at the bottom. On the right hand side, we've got our settings, our share and our play button. There's also the undo button there as well. And on the left, we've got our main feature buttons. So we've got our import audio and video button. We've got our layers button, which is where we can import audio, video, text on a separate layer to our primary video layer, and we've got some effects in there as well. Okay, so to start off, we'll import our main video footage. So we'll select the import media button, make sure we've got video select at the top, and navigate through to find the video files that you want to import. It's just a matter of selecting them and hitting the plus to drop it down to your timeline. Now at this point, we're only importing our primary footage, not any additional graphics or B-roll footage. We'll get to that in a minute. Then you just need to back back out, back to the timeline, hitting the back button. So now that our footage is down in the timeline, the first step is to actually do a scan or a first pass of your footage and remove anything that you absolutely don't wanna have in your end video. So to remove all the extra footage at the start of our clip, we just tap on the clip and we get a green handle that pops up. It's just a matter of clicking and dragging that handle to the right so that our video file starts where we want it. It's just a matter of moving it back and forth to get it in the right spot. And then we'll do exactly the same at the end of the clip. We'll remove all the extra stuff beyond where we want the video to finish. So we just tap on the clip and we slide that green handle or green marker back to where we want the video to finish. So while we're still in this first step of refining all of this video footage down to just the footage that we want in our end product, then you may need to remove sections of your video where you might've made a mistake. So to do that, you just find the area that you wanna remove Select the video clip and then click on the little knife or the little blade to cut the clip at that point. So you can see there, we've got two separate clips now. So if we come across a bit further, we can add another cut, maybe where we want the clip to start again. And again, select the clip, click on the little knife or the little blade, and we've split the clip at that point as well. So now we've got three clips in our timeline. So if you wanted to remove that section, you can just select that center clip now and then press the delete button, which is the trash can. We'll just undo that now. The other thing you can do is this clip is exactly the same as the others. If we select it, you'll get the handles appear on that as well. So you can actually get full control over your video and really refine your editing here by sliding these handles in and out in order to really refine your cuts in your video. You also have the ability to pick up and move the clips around in your timeline to where you want them. It's just a matter of tapping and holding on the clip that you wanna move and then moving it either to the left or right and it will snap into place before or after the clips as you move them around. To navigate around the timeline, you can just pinch to zoom on that timeline, which will zoom in and out, or you can just tap and slide left and right and you'll slide left and right across your timeline. Now, if you've got any additional footage or any B-roll that you wanna add in, you just come across and hit the layers button on the left-hand side and select video. From there, navigate through to the video file that you wanna add in as B-roll and hit the plus button to drop it down to the timeline. Then hit the back button a few times to get back to the primary editing screen. 
So you can see that the B-roll footage we've just added has appeared on its own layer above our primary video layer. And it's actually in a smaller box or a picture in picture effect that we can just pick up and move around and scale to how we want it to look, which is really powerful. We also have the ability as we do with normal video footage to split the clips. We get the handles that appear as well so we can really refine how much of the video clip we're actually wanting to use. We can pick up the clips by tapping on them and sliding them left and right. So really you get a lot of control over your editing in this app. The next step is to add in any audio, so that could be music or sound effects into your edit. To do that, you just click on the import media button, select music at the top, and then find the music tracks that you want to import. So for us, we're gonna add in full golden skies. So we select the track and hit the plus button, and it's dropped down into our timeline. Once again, we hit the back button a couple of times to get back to our main editing interface. So you can see there that our music track has been dropped in the timeline right below our video footage. Now just the same as with the other clips we've added, you actually get the same amount of control with your music or audio tracks as well. Just by tapping on the music track, you can see that straight away we get the handles, in this case they're purple, and we can adjust the start and end points of the clip. We can split the clip in two. We can pick up the clip and we can move it around in our timeline. You really get a great level of control in this app. The next step is to add in any titles, text, or graphics into your videos. So if we come back up to the start now, we can add titles to our video by pressing the Layers button and then Title. Now in here, there's a heap of different templates to choose from. We're just gonna pick the default with Fade. So that's just a basic title that we can control and adjust, but it's automatically got a fade built in. So to edit the text, it's just a matter of tapping on the text and replacing it with whatever you like. To get more control over your titles, if you really want to tweak them and play around with them, click the edit button and then click title designer. In there, you can change things like color, the opacity, you can change the font, you can change whether your title is left centered or right justified. You can apply bold and italics filters. This app allows you to get pretty creative with your titles. You also have the ability to easily resize, reposition and recolor, three R's, your titles. So if you want to move your title around, it's just a matter of clicking on it and dragging it into the position you want. So we're going to add a second title here. We'll call one Justin Brown and the next one will be Primal Video. So let's set it up as a normal lower third super title would be for a start of a video. So now that we've got our first title, we're just going to duplicate that and you'll see that it appears next to our title. We can then drag that down onto a second video layer, which is underneath our first title. To edit the text, we just tap on the text We'll type in primal video and we'll scale it down and move it into position. So now that your video is close to being finished, the next step is to color grade your video. So just click on an individual clip, hit the edit button and then pick color adjustment. In there you get three simple settings for your color correction, brightness, contrast and saturation. And really between the three of these, you should be able to get some pretty good effects. So it's just a matter of tweaking these until you get the look that you're after. I'll just show you a quick comparison of the clip before, which is unedited, and the one that we've just color corrected. Now, as PowerDirector only lets you apply color effects to individual clips, if you think you're gonna do lots of cuts or edits in your video, then it might be worth color correcting your videos first up at the start of your editing in one hit instead of at this point in the process. This is something that I'd normally advise against because it's gonna make your editing process slower because every time you make any changes then to your timeline, it's gonna to have to re-render and reprocess those color effects that you've added to your timeline. And something else just to show you in here as well is you do have the ability to add effects to your video files as well. So if you just select a video clip and hit the effects button on the left, and there's a heap of little effects that you can add or, or looks that you can add onto your video files. Now you can think of these like filters that you'd find in something like Instagram. They're probably okay for anything consumer grade, but if you want any professional looks, then I'd suggest sticking to the color tools, which were the brightness, the saturation, and the contrast. The next step is to adjust your audio levels. So select settings and then audio mixing. This screen lets you adjust all your volumes from a track level. You don't have to get in and edit the volume of each individual clip. You can actually do it on the entire track, which is awesome. So for example, by lowering the volume on the music tracks, any music or songs that you've got that are on that track 
they'll all be now set to this new volume level. You also have the ability to adjust the volume levels on a clip by clip basis as well. So if you've only got one or two clips that are too quiet or too loud and you only want to adjust those, then you can do that as well. So it's just a matter of selecting the clip that you want to adjust the volume for, clicking the edit button and then selecting volume. So the other thing that you could probably do with your videos is to fade your music track in at the start of your video and fade it out at the end of your video. So to do that, you just select your music track, press edit, and then choose volume. And then on this audio configuration page, you've got the ability to enable the fade in and fade out for that music track. So now that we've finished editing our video, you can press the export button in the top right corner. It gives you two options. You have the ability to save your project, which I'd highly recommend that you do. And then you can press it again and select produce video. Cyberlink Power Director gives you a heap of output options. You can save it direct to your gallery or to your phone. You can share it on Facebook, share it on YouTube. You can also save your project to the Cyberlink Cloud, which means if you're using Cyberlink or Power Director on your PC for video editing as well, then you can send your project and share your projects between your Android device and your Windows PC. So that's pretty cool. You also get more output options if you want some more advanced control over your export. And that gives you the option to export in full HD, HD or SD and save the file direct to your device. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a share, a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that big subscribe button. If you haven't downloaded it yet, make sure you grab our free guide running through the most efficient step-by-step -step process for editing your videos. It's the ultimate process for creating your videos faster without all the unnecessary rework and double handling that I've seen chew up a ton of time for my clients and students over the years. Just hit the link inside this video or below in the description and download it now. We'll see you next time.